morning, uh, good evening, uh, depending where you are. I'm uh, Massimo Introvigni and I illustrating a painting by Annibale Carracci, uh, an Italian Baroque painter, and this painting launched a theme which became very popular. The idea that uh, truth, truth is the naked figure in the center, uh, has been kept in a well by uh, the bad, uh, uh, the villain is this lady dressed in green. She's now under the feet of the truth, but she was seated on the well. I'm not making this up. I know from which book uh, Carracci took the story. So lie or slander was seated on the well. But when the old man, and the old man is time, time comes and frees truth from the well. And then you have the two characters on the side, which represents goodness, but we can say peace and love once truth has been freed. And as I said, this is a perfect metaphor of the story of Taiji Men, where the truth was really hidden at the end of the well, kept by slender, personified by some Taiwanese bureaucrats in the end of the well. But then, with the passing of time, truth is, is now coming out, and it is time lifting uh, uh, truth out of the well, but it's also a lot of people who are cooperating in lifting the truth out of the well and telling this truth uh, uh, about uh, Taiji men to the world. So we will start this webinar by showing uh, a video, which is uh, quite interesting because uh, it's actually a project by a young girl, a ninth grader, uh, member of Taiji Men, did it in the US with a friend for the National History Day. So it's how a young girl tries to introduce uh, to uh, schoolmates uh, her experience and the story of Taiji Men. So this is uh, the video, A Battle for Justice, and we will start our webinar with video. Amidst the first presidential election in December 1996, a prosecutor named To Kuang and accused a spiritual group, Tai Chi Man, of fraud and witchcraft. These heinous accusations led to the deprivation and limitations of their human rights and religious beliefs in Taiwan. Because of the failure at diplomatic resolutions, this event resulted in a political stalemate between the two parties. Ultimately, the failed attempt at diplomacy created a seemingly insuperable encumbrance, instigating international debates regarding the Tai Chi Man case. Due to the unjust violations within the Taiwanese government, international activists continue to take initiative in reforming the corruption that infringes human rights and the concept of freedom of religion or belief. Established in 1966 by Dr. Hong Daozi, Tai Chi Men is a manpai derived from ancient Chinese qigong and martial arts. Dr. Hong has also promoted high-profile initiatives for love, conscience, and world peace, and in hopes of spreading good health and happiness. As a result of achieving numerous successes and helping over 10,000 people for more than five decades, Taijiman gained international recognition and received praise from all four Taiwanese presidents. As Taiwan's martial law was repealed in 1987, Taiwan was an advocate for religious freedom. However, authoritarianism became a hot debate amongst the nation. It continued to pose a hindrance to the democracy of Taiwan. After the first presidential election of 1996, religious minorities were targeted, shut down, and discriminated against due to their religious purge. Receiving threatening anonymous letters, Tajiman was caught in the crossfire of these religious purges. 
And so there is insufficient evidence, Tai Jun was dismissed within one to two weeks by the Kaohsiung Wei Xingzhu's prosecutor's office. As a result, the letters caused the prosecutor from Taipei's district attorney's office, Ho Kui Ren, to relaunch large-scale searches against this organization. Under Taiwan Criminal Code 245, the prosecutor or lead investigator must keep all information relevant to the case confidential. However, Ho brought media crews to broadcast the searches on 12 different academies and 7 houses of Tai Jun members, violating Criminal Code 245. On Christmas Eve in 1996, there was no peace in my family. Even though no one accused my dad of any crime, he was detained and not allowed to communicate with others by the prosecutor for four months. Our house was searched. We were scared and didn't know when my dad would come home. Before retirement, my dad was the chief financial officer of a famous company with outstanding credit. However, because of prosecutor's illegal infestation, his credit was totally ruined. Because of negative and false re press reports, my mom, who worked in the Ministry of Justice, was under a lot of pressure and was forced to retire early. My sister and I went abroad to leave the heartbreaking place. She went to France, and I came to the United States. Years later, my dad received national compensation for unlawful imprisonment. But nothing could ever compensate for our pain and suffering from this incident. Seven years ago, my dad passed away with regrets, unable to see the redress of the Tai Chi case. As Tai Chi was being prosecuted, Ho sent letters to the county and city governments, including the Ministry of Interior, requesting the disbandment of Tai Chi Min. In addition, he commanded the Public Works Bureau of Taipei to disconnect the group's water and electricity. Despite his failure to discover anything that proved his accusations true, Ho Chui picked certain information that diplomatically disparaged Tai Chi Min's reputation as a spiritual organization into a harmful cult, causing national debates for questioning Tai Chi Min's innocence. Additionally, Ho disregarded the illegality of double jeopardy written under the Criminal Code of Taiwan by accusing Tai Chi Min of being a cram school and committing tax evasion. In 1997, Ho subpoenaed Shi Yuesheng, a tax officer devoid of any detailed knowledge of the investigation of Tai Chi Min, to commit perjury. During the indictment, Ho used Shi's words as the only tangible evidence against the leader of Tai Chi Min. <laughs> Despite his illicit investigations and having his accusations disproved, he was promoted to become the deputy of an anti-corruption organization for the government. On July 13, 2007, Taiwan Supreme Court acquitted Tai Chi Men on all charges of fraud and tax evasion. Innocent defendants were given national compensation. However, nothing could compensate for the time, effort, and anguish that the members have suffered through. Despite the Supreme Court's verdict on this case, the remaining tax fines from the National Tax Bureau, or NTB, still pose the problem. 82 bipartisan legislators signed a petition demanding the NTB to revoke the tax bills that violated the legal process. With the Congress's help, the representative of the Ministry of Finance agreed to repeal the tax bills in a public hearing. However, the government officials rescinded their promises and kept the tax bills. Eventually, the tax authorities corrected most of the tax bills to zero. Except for the 1992 I was lucky to be a messenger to help my Tai Chi Man brothers and sisters in the 
the Tai Chi Minh Shifu and Shimu at the beginning of the Tai Chi Minh incident in 1996. I will never forget the first time I met a defense lawyer. He told me that I need to be very careful because the persecutor uh, say in the media he is going to detain 200 more people. So every time I went to see the lawyer, I would put a lot of clothes in my car so that I can change them into at any time. And also when I take notes, I use different kind of codes to avoid mentioning about my Tai Chi Minh brothers sisters. The important message was conveyed in person to avoid being monitored. Tai Chi Minh is a very wonderful for me to improve my physical, mental and spiritual health. And this incident is a barrier to allow Tai Chi Minh to promote love and peace around the world. As Tai Chi Minh sought to educate the public regarding societal injustice, they posted their contention on social media and protested on the streets of Taiwan in an attempt to gain awareness of the dire situation. Because it is excruciatingly late into the world that Tai Chi Minh's core initiatives are being held captive by the corrupt government, there have been 25 webinars since July of 2020, with over 100 advocates calling for diplomatic reformation of the violations of human rights against Tai Chi Minh. Thus, the grave circumstances of Tai Chi Minh magnetized international attention from everyone around the world. During the 2021 IRF Summit, Tai Chi Minh members participated and spoke to many politicians about this case, such as Katrina Lantos Sweat and Sam Brownback. Sweat is currently the president of the Lantos Foundation for Human Rights and Justice and the former chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. And in Taiwan, the long running attack against the Tai Chi Minh community by bureaucratic despots within the tax administration have led many religious freedom experts around the world. Con to condemn this form of administrative religious persecution. But what the government should do is to protect that right to peacefully practice your faith as you see fit. Taiwan's ambassador at large for religious freedom illustrates his support for Tai Chi Minh's contentions. <laughs> In violation of due process and the rules of evidence, paired with his fallacious accusations, the attempted prosecution of Tai Chi Minh, led by Ho, was unwarranted. This arduous journey for justice inflicted permanent burdens on Tai Chi Minh members and created an atmosphere of animosity that endangered the diplomatic climate of Taiwan's democracy. As such, the value of truth, integrity, and justice cannot be appraised as Tai Chi Minh members fought against injustice and corruption within their place of establishment for 25 years. The battle for justice has shed light on the chain of unethical corruption within the Taiwanese government and internationally inspired revolutions for injustice. By raising the origins of corruption and greed within the government, the democratic nation of Taiwan will thrive in its endeavors towards democracy and not authoritarianism. Hello, my name is Michelle Shen and I'm an 8th grader from Southern California. I created a documentary with my friend for National History Day about Tai Chi Minh. My initial thought in making this documentary was to advocate for Tai Chi Minh's rectification and to spread the word. I've wanted to work on this project ever since I was in 7th grade because I thought it would help Tai Chi Minh if I participated and competed to spread the word on this case. I also wanted to share my take on this incident and how it impacted my life. My experiences in Tai Chi Minh, as well as my family members, motivating me to work on this project has led to the creation of this documentary. I think the most unjust part is the unlawful imprisonment and detaining of the Tai Chi Minh members and leaders. Because of the corrupt bonus system and the greed of, of a few unlawful officials, the 1992 tax bill was kept. This incident has caused detrimental damages on the Tai Chi Minh members and leaders as it led them to remember this moment for the rest of their lives. Because of this incident, this has prevented Dr. Hong and other Tai Chi Minh members to spread the Tai Chi Minh culture and the message of love and peace around the world. I hope that this documentary could help people from around the world understand the Tai Chi Minh case more and how this case is not only a tax case and that it is a human rights violation. This project has helped me understand Tai Chi Minh more and how I can help them as a group. I hope international scholars around the world can use this documentary to help rectify the Tai Chi Minh case. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, after this uh, delightful uh, 
video, Stephen and Nada, the well-known uh, human rights activist uh, for Nigeria, Baptist pastor, and the president of the International Committee on Nigeria, sent a pre-recorded uh, video, and so perhaps we can play his video. And specific to uh, human rights and the Thai Men case, and this is actually a special forum to discuss this. I'm concerned about what is happening in our world, but also when judgment is given and it's not respected in this area for the tidy men, then something is wrong. And that is why all of us in the global community are advocating for the right of people, for those whose rights have been violated, we need to speak up and we need to act more effectively. And what this means is that there are going to be sanctions, there are going to be questions, so that the Taiwanese government will be able to do what is right. And they should respect the court that has actually exonerated the Taiji men people. This is very important because if you don't do that, we'll just be speaking and no action will be taken. I think we continue to echo what the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, the truth is an empowering and healing force. We embrace it for the past, the present, and the future. But this truth must be heard and somebody must propagate it. And that is what we are propagating, I repeat. Propagating it means we propagate it effectively with the right people who can take action, taking action that can make the Taiwanese government to act and to act fast and quick so that we put this case of human rights violations of the Taiji men people behind us. We have a lot of issues confronting our world and we cannot gloze over the Taiji men case. Thank you. So we are thankful for the faithful and the continuous support of uh, Dr. Nanda. And now our next speaker is uh, Dr. Daniela Bovolenta, who works at uh, Bitter Winter. And uh, she will uh, both talk about uh, Bitter Winter support of uh, Taiji men and introduce a new initiative. On December 4, 2020, Bitter Winter published uh, its first article on the Taiji Men case, introducing the movie A Question of Justice, directed by Massimo Introvigne, and the side event at the third ministerial to advance religious freedom, co organized in Basav by the US Department of State and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Poland. Both the movie and the event were important steps in the international campaign advocating justice for Taiji men. And it is significant that our coverage of the case in Bitter Winter started from then. We have now published 113 articles on the case in 50 months. Bitter Winter is a magazine devoted to human rights and religious freedom throughout the world. While we mostly cover cases of bloody persecution, killings, and torture, we are also aware that religious discrimination has many facets. The Taiji Men case is of global importance. Our voice will not be silent until the voice of justice for Taiji Men will finally resonate in Taiwan. Our voice will continue to call for justice and to tell those who perpetuate injustice that they are, as it, it is now fashionable to say, on the wrong side of history. Today, however, uh, when the United Nations celebrate the International Day for the Right to the Truth uh, concerning gross human rights violation and for the dignity of the victims, I am pleased to announce that we are ready to go one step ahead. In cooperation with our friends in Taiwan, today we launch a new website, taijimencase.org. The new website uh, does, does not mean that Peter Winter, which has a global audience with multiple interests, will stop publishing about the Taijimen case. On the contrary, 
we plan uh, to continue our regular plan of publishing news about uh, webinars and seminars and about the presentation of the Tai Chi Men case in international scholarly conferences and uh, religious liberty events, as well as individual papers from these webinars and events. TaijiMenCase.org will work side by side with Peter Winter, a daughter uh, publication covering the Taiji Men case. It will not replace them, but it will offer those uh, interested in Taiji Men case and those who should be interested in it, a collection easy to use of what uh, has been published uh, on the case in magazines, including Bitter Witter and scholarly journals, as well as videos of, of the events and other videos. The website is a tool in the service of the idea, also an important tool. As the French novelist uh, Victor Hugo uh, once said, nothing is more powerful than an idea whose uh, time has come. The time for taijimencase.org has come. The time for the idea of conscience, truth and justice for Taijimen has come. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. And uh, <clears throat> I hope everybody, even in the uh, United States, uh, could enjoy this really encyclopedic uh, website, which will be online uh, as a matter of a uh, few days. Now I'm pleased to pass to the next speaker, who is Professor Holly Falk, who teaches uh, religious studies uh, at Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington. Um, I would like to start by acknowledging the importance of Taiwan to the world and the topical nature of this conversation and this meeting. I visited Taiwan four times and I've come to love the country. Taiwan is a vibrant di democracy and its self-determination and autonomy need to be preserved. Taiwan is not perfect and like other countries, it still has problems. Although being able to criticize the government should be read as a sign of the nation's overall health. As in other places, conditions of bias can seep into political and legal decisions. The case of Taiji Men reverberates with an international pattern. When it comes to religious minorities, bureaucratic decisions are often arbitrary and courts often look the other way. The situation between Ukraine and Russia has made the world aware of the global stakes regarding Taiwanese security. The vulnerability of Taiwan has rightfully been compared to the vulnerability of the countries on Russia's border. The case of Taiji Men, however, invites a different comparison between Taiwan and Russia where religious minorities face frequent harassment and persecution. Like the Jehovah's Witnesses and other groups in Russia, in Taiwan, Taiji Men has endured selective prosecution for process crimes, including confiscation of, of property. Religious freedom is imbricated with secular civil liberties, regardless of an individual's personal faith, it is a, it is a cause that should concern us all. I hope the courts and government in Taiwan consider the implications of allowing arbitrary treatment to stand. Around the world right now, many people fear events are spinning out of control. Governments have a responsibility to their citizens to preserve civil society and equal justice under the law. Thank you very much for your attention and time. And uh, I hope we can continue with having uh, you and other representatives of the American Academia in these two webinars. Uh, we have one who is not able to join us, but has also pre-recorded the video and uh, is a pioneer of uh, studying uh, uh, the case of Taiji men in the United States uh, or uh, outside of Taiwan. He started well before me. And this professor, uh, Kenneth Jacobsen, who is professor of law at Temple University in Philadelphia, and he will speak to us through a pre-recorded video. Good afternoon, or morning, wherever it happens to be. I am sorry I'm not able to be with you in person. Uh, my teaching and faculty responsibilities at Temple Law School have uh, prevented me from uh, participating live, but I am honored that I've been asked to submit this video 
uh, and appreciate uh, that offer. And I also certainly want to uh, appreciate and express my appreciation to the uh, other panelists uh, in this webinar, uh, outstanding individuals, highly credentialed individuals that have uh, a lot to say and a lot of wisdom uh, to share to those that are looking at this uh, video. So the International Day for the Right to the Truth Concerning Gross Human Rights Violations and for the Dignity of Victims. That is the day that we are celebrating, commemorating, and discussing today, that UN designation. But we can ask ourselves, what is the truth? What is the truth? Since this day asks the, the right to the truth, what is the truth? What does that mean? The truth means that we have complete honesty and transparency and openness about the events that occurred. The truth means that we know who participated in those events. And the truth also means that we understand why they did what they did. What were the reasons for their conduct? And this makes the, this particular day and its application at Tai Chi Minh uh, somewhat unique because in a way we know the truth. We know the truth about what happened. It's contained in hundreds of thousands of pages of files of petitions, of court documents, of court decisions, of appeals, of jur in journals, and even webinars like this one. The facts, the truth, really are known. But as the UN Commission on Human Rights expressly stated in its 2006 report, recognizing this day. The truth includes something else. And that is there must be the guarantee of effective remedies and remediations for these violations that are exposed from the truth. There has to be accountability. There has to be remedies available. And this is what has not happened in the Taiji Min case. And this is the part of the truth for this day that the government of Taiwan has failed in its responsibilities to Taiji Min, to its DZ, and to Dr. Huang. But I also want to focus on the second part of the title of this proclamation of this day. And that is that it's the International Day to also recognize the dignity of the victims, the dignity of the victims. So what does that mean? That we pay tribute to those who have fought for human rights and religious freedom that we honor those who have persevered in the face of tyranny and oppression. And that is what Tai Chi Minh and Dr. Hong have done in the face of unrelenting decades long persecution, they have persevered and they will continue to persevere until justice is finally achieved. I have fought on behalf of Tai Chi Minh for seven years. I'm not going to give up. I'm not a quitter. It's not in my DNA. I've also fought for justice and for the rule of law my entire professional career. Right now, I'm working on a case involving human trafficking immigrants who came to our country seeking asylum, who were put in jail and were forced by private contractors to our government that run those jails, that operate those jails, ICE, were forced to
to work for a dollar a day, sometimes for years while they were waiting for their hearings. A complete injustice, and I'm fighting on their behalf with others around the country. So I do not shy away from the good fights. In fact, I embrace them because when you're fighting for principle and when you're fighting for what's right, then that is something that can allow you to get up every morning and put your head down on bed at night and feel good about what you've accomplished. So to conclude, I, again, I wanna thank uh, the uh, participants in this webinar. It's an amazing list of uh, wonderful speakers. I regret that I can't uh, be there again. I look forward to seeing it uh, once it's uh, available online so I could watch all of the comments of some of my good friends that are on this panel and uh, some others that I don't know, know that well. But what I can say is that this day has, I think, particular meaning and importance for Tai Chi Minh and for the fight and the battle in which we are all engaged on its behalf. And we will not quit until we are, have prevailed. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely, we will not quit. I will uh, uh, pass the torch to Willy Fautre, who is a co-organizer of this webinar as co-founder and director of Human Rights Without Frontiers. Thank you for passing me on the, the torch or the baton as I could also say, for the race to the second uh, session that is uh, usually devoted to uh, testimonials of uh, uh, members of the movement, so the, the disease. And these contributions uh, are always uh, very important, uh, as we have seen in former webinars, because they are voices of insiders, while we are outsiders. They are voices of those who bear, share, and communicate the 25, the burden of the 25 years of suffering of uh, Taiji Ben. And before giving the floor to uh, those uh, dizzy, I think that uh, we will also share with our <clears throat> viewers here a second video uh, titled Unbreakable Bonds. Unbreakable Bonds, Episode 2. The academy without Shirfu and his wife was bleak and desolate. A sister who used to be cheerful had a worried look on her face. Hey, brothers and sisters, I've packed my bag. If I was taken into custody, please hire a lawyer for me. Yet, she was also fearless. On hearing this, a brother became emotional shouting. Don't be afraid. We are innocent. Because of Prosecutor Ho's intimidation, Tai Ji men dizzy who are kind-hearted people felt insecure. Making intimidating remarks via the media was Prosecutor Ho's scheme to dissolve the academies. Although the dizzy were afraid of being caught and detained they did not hide. They just packed their bags, handed their bank books and pin numbers to their children, and took turns guarding the academies. Since all assets of Shifu and his wife had been frozen, the 12 academies were confronted with financial difficulties simultaneously. The Dizzy contributed money or time to keep the academies up and running. The Dizzy wove one lotus heart after another with red threads. Each one was tied with a yellow ribbon. A total of 16,666 lotus hearts were made with each representing how much the Dizzy missed their Shirfu and his wife, and how much they worried about them. The lotus hearts connected all the Dizzy's hearts to defend Tai Ji men together. Aware of the possible danger and fearful, the Dizzy still insisted on doing the right thing. This is true bravery for love. The four months following the beginning of the investigation were like an endless nightmare for the Dizzy. 
numerous and negative news headlines about Thai G men were falsely reported day after day. During the four-month investigation, over 400 news reports were published. Where on earth did the one-sided negative news come from? Every single piece of the fake news shocked the dizzy. Thai G men, a place full of laughter, turned into a group allegedly involved in fraud overnight. Prosecutor Ho, who had been quite popular with the media, made another move by openly calling for the establishment of a self-help association. Register ASAP to protect your rights. He took advantage of human weaknesses and used money as an inducement. Some Dizzy's names were put on the victim list by their relatives or friends without their permission. Some couldn't resist the temptation of greed in their hearts and wrote the names of their deceased relatives or friends or fake identities in the Self-Help Association's questionnaires. The Self-Help Association fabricated by Prosecutor Ho ruined many families. Afterwards, the judge found in court that the association was bogus and confirmed there was no victim at all. How come there existed the Self-Help Association? Prosecutor Ho shot arrows before drawing the target. His false accusations had never been justified. He then targeted Chen, a senior dizzy. When Chen was taken to the investigation bureau for questioning, he saw his wife, who was working at the Ministry of Justice at that time, being locked in another detention room. As soon as Chen entered the interrogation room, Prosecutor Ho shut down the audio recording. Did you see your wife? Then answer wisely. Your Shurfu's Kung Fu isn't real, right? It is real. My Shurfu's Kung Fu is real. Chen answered truthfully. Doesn't it matter if your wife's salary is halved and your two daughters have nothing to eat? Prosecutor Ho asked. Chen looked at the prosecutor who's leveraging the safety of his wife and children. To force him to make false accusations made him very sad and mad. Thinking of his Shifu's teachings and his own experience at Tai Ji Men, Chen tried to stay calm and replied again. Shifu's Kung Fu is real. The result of his telling the truth, however, was that his detention was extended by two months. Chen's wife was smeared, being depicted as an official of the Ministry of Justice involved in the case, and she was forced to retire early. Prosecutor Ho was associated with a temple in southern Taiwan. He included an outrageous accusation in his indictment. I would include the accusation of raising goblins to defraud people. Tai G men dizzy were at a loss. What is a goblin? The absurd accusation became a hot topic in the media in favor of gossip and sensationalized news. Suddenly Tai G men was depicted as an evil religious organization. The prosecutor's office and the academy were crowded with the media. TV stations scrambled to report negative news about Tai G men. The Dizzy were under even greater pressure. Some Tai G men Dizzy's wedding engagements were broken off. Get out! Some Dizzy were turned away by their relatives. Some Dizzy were transferred at work. Why don't you just quit? Some Dizzy were isolated at work. Don't talk to him. Many younger Tai G men Dizzy were bullied and couldn't go to school. Freak! The Dizzy were heartbroken. Their pain was beyond words. Can't express the pain in my heart. There is no way to tell the suffering of the heart. Dear viewer, you could never imagine that, under Taiwan's so-called democracy, 
Taiji Men, a law-abiding group that promotes physical and mental health of world citizens, as well as preserves education and culture of conscience. Such an excellent group that each Taiwanese president pay tribute to. Merely a prosecutor can illegally persecute them. This is really a catastrophe for Taiwan and its people. Next, what more outrageous illegal acts will prosecutor Ho Quanren have? Please continue to watch the third episode of Unbreakable Bonds. Thank you for that very informative uh, video that shows us how just one man, the prosecutor who uh, created that machinery and put it in place just to spread lies about Taiji Ben and to stigmatize the, the movement and uh, create uh, some sort of uh, uh, mistrust inside the movement. But finally, he didn't manage to destroy uh, Taiji Ben. And the first um, dizzy that I will introduce is uh, Alan Shi, who is operation manager. Facers, scholars, old friends who join today, greetings. Tai Chi Men Friendship and Goodwill Group was invited by Senator Mr. Jesse Hell, Chairman of the United States Senate Foreign Relationships Committee, to conduct the cultural performances in Capitol Hill. Mayor of Washington District of Columbia, Mr. Antonio Williams, officially declared March 22, 2000 as Tai Chi Man Qigong Academy Day and praised Tai Chi Man as international peace and goodwill ambassador. Affirming the efforts made by Tai Chi Men for cultural preservation, no addition booklet for the trip. And I share with my professor, he liked it very much and asked to keep it as a souvenir. We have already visited 1,001 countries in the world and participated in more than 3,000 cultural exchange activities which has been praised and recognized by many people all around the world. For example, the mayor of Honolulu declared September 19, 2001 as a Tai Chi Man Qigong Academy Day and Dr. Hong Dao's Day, and the city of Berkeley declared August 5, 2005 as a Federation of War Peace and Love Day. Can you imagine? Such a group has been treated unfairly by the Taiwanese government. Even after the courts has ruled we are innocent, have no tax owed, no tax evasion, and the control yuan found that the prosecutor actually committed a major violations and the National Taxation Bureau committed seven major violations. We are still illegally taxed by 25 years and illegally auction of the property which will be built for the academy. Former legislators Luo Sule once said, quote, if the Tai Chi Men case is not resolved, there will be no justice in Taiwan, end quote. In fact, Taiwan's human rights protection system has gotten worse. On March 21st, three days ago, the law firm of famous human rights lawyer Zhang Jin was searched by police with armed forces simply because it violated the personal identity information law. On September 19, 2020, a Tai Chi Man Dis and volunteers was arrested by police on the street and later detained in a police station overnight just because she was holding a poster. The prosecutors who handle these two incidents are exactly the same as the pros prosecutor Ho Kwan Ren held a high profile search at the Tai Chi Man by police with armed forces 25 years ago. Taiwan is not improved. 
Professor Wu Jinqing made the following statement at the March 22nd press conference, quote, conducting a search for, for a misdemeanor case is a serious violation of principle of proportionality. Sorry, it's a, a violation of the principle of proportionality concerning such a minor offense, which cannot be prosecuted without a complaint by the victim. It is unbelievable. An army of police were dispatched to search the law firm of attorney Zhang, who had voiced this discontent with the ruling party. If such an incident is tolerated and accepted as a president, it will not only cause great harm to lawyers, but also seriously erode the core of attorneys' rights to defend their clients. In the process of becoming a more democratic country, ruled by law, Taiwan should have not only criminal justice, but also substantive justice." End quote. Therefore, on this International Day for the Right to the Truth, I sincerely appeal to President Chai to truly hear the voice of the people, to truly realize what you promised do, during your election campaign, to achieve truly transitional justice, justice in Taiwan, to rectify fabricated cases, to punish those perpetrators, and to protect human rights so that people may truly live and work peacefully, joyfully, and harmoniously in Taiwan. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alan Shi, for reminding us, among many other things, that the implementation of a transitional justice that the Taiwanese President Tsai had promised during her re-election campaign has not been followed by any concrete steps and to uh, launch again that call for justice uh, <clears throat> for Taiji men uh, people, for their voices uh, to be heard. And now I will uh, give the, the floor to Howard Kuan, uh, whose presentation is titled A Little More of Care a little more of protection to your rights. Hello, everyone. My name is Howard, and I'm a Taijiman Eat. The world's massive devastation is incalculable and irreversible. However, in today's Taiwan, there are tax bombs on par with the Russia Ukraine conflict, which continues to threaten the people. Mr. Zong, a brilliant young man, is a scientific and technological genius. He received numerous awards prior to guarantee, and he is also a tax evader. In 2008, he founded a software design firm in Taipei. He received several awards, but received no monetary compensation. The company's operating results were still below expectation, so he shut it down in 2013. Surprisingly, the tax bureau claimed that they failed to fill a tax return in 2012, and they received a tax bill of 46 million NT in 2014. It's, it is possible that the company didn't receive the tax bill previously, and when it was sent back in 2014, a total of 54 million in fines was added. The executive office froze all accounts. The issue is that their company doesn't guarantee, doesn't generate that much revenue. Everything is a figment of the tax mess in the nation. Mr. Zong complained that without this income, he cannot claim that he owes a tax, and that the tax is based on the fact that he didn't deny it, rather than actual evidence. 
it is implausible to claim that he confirmed the attack solely because he failed to provide relief overseas. Mr. Zhong holds no idea that Taiwan, a free democratic and human rights country, would restrict him from leaving the country due to a wrong tax bill that he couldn't return home for nine years. Today is right to do stay. I hope that everyone can use the state to double check themselves to, ch to see if there are bystanders who don't know the truth or prosecutors who prosecute the people. Punishment is necessary because otherwise we'll repeatedly abuse public power to prosecute the people. The people, the people will always be at a disadvantage and peace will never be achieved. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Howard, uh, for focusing on and denouncing the inflation of artificial uh, and fabricated cases of alleged tax uh, evasion uh, cases in Taiwan. Uh, this shows that the problem of Taiji Man is much broader. Uh, it is systemic. And this systemic problem is worsening year after year, and it is uh, urgent uh, to, to put an end to it. Indeed, you, you recalled some uh, statistics saying that uh, from 1.9 million new cases, uh, new tax cases in Taiwan in 2001, to 14 million new cases in 2021, the number had increased by 7.5 fold in the last uh, 20 years. So this is a serious social problem for Taiwan that needs to be solved as soon as possible. Otherwise it will be out of control. Thank you for focusing on these uh, uh, points. And I will now uh, give the floor to uh, Sandy Lin, uh, who is accounting uh, specialist. This is my great honor to participate in today's forum. Last year, we visited Washington DC for four times. In July, we participate in International Religious Freedom Summit and met many international religious scholars there. Many people could not believe that persecution of religion or beliefs would have happened in Taiwan. Scholars from all over the world spoke for us, urging President Tsai to stand up to help solve the Tai Chi Minh case. In addition, Tai Chi Minh disciples from all over the United States also wrote to their senators and their representatives hoping that they will pay attention to such persecutions in Taiwan. I went to DC again in early December last year. It was a great honor to have the opportunity to meet with Congresswoman Yang Kim. I was touched to see her taking time out of her busy schedule to meet with us. The Congresswoman has always been concerned about human rights issues. She was willing to listen to our voices, willing to offer help. And she recognized the efforts and the involvement that Tajima has brought to local communities and encouraged us to continue to do the right thing to reach our goals. She also assured us she would try her best to express her concern about our case. What I saw is the sincerity of a Congresswoman whose willingness to help the people solve their problems. Thus, a government that is willing to listen to the voice of the people. Only by knowing the truth can a government bring hope to the people. On the contrary, we visited the Taipei Economic, Culture, and representative office in the United States take role four times last year with the hope of meeting the Taiwanese deputy representative to the United States. But she was always too busy to meet us. We even waited outside take role for a long time. 
being unable to meet face to face as an overseas Taiwanese, I feel very disappointed at the scene. I saw members of the House of Representatives and the international experts and scholars take human rights issues seriously. However, Taiwan is a democratic country with freedom and rule of law, but the government ignoring attitude toward the people is a serious violation of the international convenient on the civil and the political rights and the international convenient on economic, social, and the cultural rights. They have not even fulfilled the protection of human rights in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I think that the Tajiman case is not only a case of persecution of religious belief, but I also the persecution of human rights. For more than 25 years, the Taiwanese government has seriously mistreated Taijinmen. It is state violence for the Taiwanese government to remain silent and not return justice to Taijinmen. The fact that the Taiwanese government is unwilling to admit its wrongdoing makes me worry about the future development of democracy in Taiwan. The government has bravely infringed human rights, serious harming people's well-being, especially now the world is in turmoil and Taiwan is worried about becoming the next Ukraine. I would like to call on the Taiwanese government to put the people first, to publicize the truth, to hold officials accountable for breaking laws, to fulfill the government responsibility with conscience, to return Taijiman's sacred land, to maintain the dignity of Taijiman masters and disciples so that the disciple can practice with peace of mind and then the people in Taiwan can feel safe. Thus, Taiwan will have a bright future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy, for sharing your feelings uh, with us. And I would say that uh, Taiji Men teachings are really a blessing for all those who follow them, like you, a dizzy, uh, the benefit that it brought uh, into your life. For, for others, uh, the moral values uh, of uh, Taiji Men have left to very deep transformation of their personality, uh, as it is the case with the next uh, Dizzy, who will now take the floor and that I will introduce. It's uh, Robin Liang, uh, firefighter. Oh, thank you, Willie. Uh, hello, everyone. I always felt that others should do better than I. I always felt also, so I let others do the job, but when expectations are not met, I will easily lose my temper. My Shifu, the head of Taiji Men, Dr. Hong, taught me how to be a better person and encouraged me to spread love by doing good deeds. This is what my Shifu taught me, to listen to my conscience calling, which motivated me to become a firefighter. I put an awful lot of work to pass the exams and go through the rigorous training. And now I have the chance to participate the rescue and potentially save some lives. After participating in the tax reform, I found that tax officials might be billing arbitrarily and executive officer may be overbidding in order to receive more incentive payments. I began to think about the legitimacy of incentive payments and their impact on our work ethic. I realized that the tax enforcement incentives are the source of tax injustice because greed is the root of all evils. How can a civil servant sitting on a debt and salary receive the temptation of additional bonuses? Willie pointed out in an international forum that the key to Taijiman case is the reward system. 
which not only creates conflicts of interest, but also leads to fabricated tax evasion cases. It's a pyramid scheme of abuse of power for personal gain, with officials at all levels enriching themselves. My shift taught us to love the, our country, to love the world, and love all beings. Despite being persecuted by the government, Tajiman still managed to travel to 101 countries self-financed, willing to spread the message of love and peace all around, and advocated for social justice at the same time. In 2016, I followed Shifu for the first time to Portugal to participate in the 52nd Goofy Hairs International Art Festival. We were the first Taiwanese cultural group to be invited. Taiwan has always been repressed internationally. So when I heard the national anthem at the opening ceremony, I was very moved and proud. Uh, we engaged in cultural exchanges with kind hearts, crossing the boundary between languages and religions. I witnessed the power of love and culture when we were warmly welcomed and embraced. I remember President Mama of Karabati, who rang the bell in 2016, said, ringing the bell is a message to the world about the importance and fundamental of love and peace. We cannot do it alone. It's a shared responsibility. And we did find a lot of like-minded friends with whom to collaborate, to create a conscious culture, to promote the idea of love and peace and to give people the opportunity to look into their heart and inspire themselves to do what is good for the planet. The Tajiman case is never a tax issue, but a political purge and religious persecution. It highlights the unfairness of Tech, uh, Taiwan tech system and the mutual protection of officials and officials. Mashifa told us to tell right from wrong, truth from false, and to be a practitioner, to identify and correct witnesses. So I stopped dreaming and started acting. I learned to write articles to inform more people about the truth, and I try to speak the truth out loud so our voices to be heard. We hope that some of our government leaders would eventually listen to their conscience and have the courage to admit their mistakes and clear the name of Tai Chi Man. By solving the Tai Chi Man case, the tax system and bureaucracy in Taiwan will be improved so that the democracy, rule of law, and human rights can be truly implemented. And people will live and work in a peace and harmonious. I would like to share a song composed by myself about the unfair tax system in Taiwan due to bonus system. So here you go. What Thank, thank you very much and uh, for your marvelous voice with, with, with this song. Oh, it's, it really brings a, a joyful note uh, to, <laughs> to this webinar. And thank you uh, very much to tell us how, to show us and to tell us how Dr. Hong's teachings made of you a firefighter, which was a way of realizing your dream to do good things, good deeds in your life. And your mission now on earth is certainly uh, to save human lives 
and everything that belongs to their personality, their belongings, their property, their families, and so on. Thank you very much for your uh, testimony. And uh, we will now uh, listen to the, the, the last uh, uh, Dizzy. Uh, I think it will be on the video, uh, Mrs. Wang Yiwen, Marketing Specialist, Building Material Company. 今天我要跟大家分享一位对我影响深远的伟大的女性她平常就是把我们弟子当作孩子一样的照顾但侯宽人当下极易有逃亡创证的理由就将师母积压进见侯宽人又用同样的理由担心弟子而惊惶无助一直直到羁押期限四个月届满他才提起公诉明文列入人权的保障范围他一面称这是诈欺犯罪所得他其实严重了侵害我师父的宗教传道师母总计
，他也协助师父带领我们，在弘扬太太极门的文化到全世界。他甚至也接待了各呃国内外的重要的贵宾。他不曾说累，可是，在弟子的眼中，我们看到的永远是他温柔、勇敢无惧的笑容。师父一心坚定弘扬度人。这个是一个伟大又宏呃宏大又艰辛的职业，可是师母她总是平淡而坚定地跟我们说：“师父去哪里，我就去哪里。”为了让我们众多的弟子可以安心地修行，在台湾、在美国有陆续成立道馆，为了将爱与良心的职业、爱与和平的理念推展到全世界，我们走访了全球一百零一个国家。这些点点滴滴都深印在我们弟子的心中。其实，在太极门案件，最高法院曾经在两千零七年就已经判决太极门无罪无欠税。那国税局的违法税单，财政部的诉愿委员会也连续五次都判太极门赢，要求国税局要调查。但是，一直到两千零二年，国税局第一次调查净失礼的净净值，他们是抽样寄出函查表，当时总共有两百零六位师兄姐接受调查，那我也是其中被调查的一位。我们所有人都表示净失礼是赠与，可是当时的台北国税局局长张胜和、中区国税局局长许瑜哲却纵容他的下属隐匿证据，甚至伪造文书，他们自己制作函询清单。台北国税局宣称只有九名表示是赠与，中区国税局表示说只有五名是赠与，甚至到了两千零九年。台北国税局局长林中原在回复监察院的调查时，他又自制函群新单，表示两百零六人没有一人说是赠与。那为了确认我自己的赠与意识是否被篡改，其实我有多次前往国税局，我也多次的函询国税局是否能申请阅卷，但他们都以“我们不是当事人”为理由给拒绝。我不懂，我自己写的函查表为什么我不是当事人？这种荒谬的理由他们都说得出口。你可以看得到税务机关对人权的轻视跟傲慢，而且以法院的判决即可撤销的这种自始错误虚假的税单，他却要我们人民不断在行政救济制度之中，还有陈情中耗虚耗我们的光阴。我还记得在两千一呃二零一零年六月十七日，立法院财政委员会跨党派有十四位的立委。有召开一个保护保护租税人权、终结万年不死税单的公听会，当天我也有在现场。那一天，我们搬了许多的赠与书、证、函查表，所有过去调查的资料，我们连影本都带到现场，满满的好几大箱。可是，在这个会议过程，这些违法滥权的税官都是一脸漠然、事不关己的态度。当我们弟子代表师兄在台上声嘶力竭发言的时候，台下的官员居然是闭目养神，或是打起瞌睡。我永远难以忘记那讽刺的一幕。这就是我们国家说依法行政、爱心半税的税务官员。那天会议上，当时的财政部次长张胜和跟中区国税局副局长萧树村，他们当场承诺要撤回。一九九二年，也就是民国八十一年度的综所税的强制执行，并且他们要在两个月内解决太极门的税务冤案。后续财政部在七月二十二号，其实已经有发函给田秋瑾等三位立委，他们表示已经指示中区国税局依税捐稽征法第四十条要撤回执行。可是这些流氓官员却背信讳诺。我记得当年的国庆日，我没有受邀参与国庆压轴展演。我们当年是以文武兴国、富强康乐、黄金百年、超越巅峰为主题。当时我们要庆祝国家即将迎接百年的祝福，可是我们是利用自己的周末假日在练习彩排的时候。到了当年八月二十七号那一天，国家他们又同时要违法拍卖查封我们的道馆。当时距离国庆的展演只剩下一个月又十三天。我们一方面背负着道馆即将要被封馆的痛苦，一方面又谨记师父引导我们，你要用心、用功、用人、用耳。为了要庆祝国家生日的练习，我们每天、每次在中正纪念馆的广场、广场彩排预演的时候，其实都有来自各界的贵宾来为我们伸冤。我还记得。
。当时中华人权协会副理事长苏有成律师又鼓励我们，要团结在一起，绝对不要向邪恶低头，绝不妥协，要为人权奋斗到底。我记得每次。在彩排的烈日跟汗水的洗礼之下，我很清楚的知道，我们太极们没有对不起国家，是国家对不起太极们。然后在二零二零年的八月二十一号这一天。国税局跟执行署，他们又违反正当法律程序，罔顾法律，违法拍卖我们太极门的修齐道场预定地。即使我们蒙受不白的冤屈，我的师父跟师母还是胸怀慈悲的大爱，他还是带我们，告诉我们要为国为民。他继续带我们走遍全球五大洲，弘扬爱与和平，推动两性时代运动，还是继续关怀社会的公益与人权。我们自身经历人权迫害的磨难，可是师父还是教我们要怀抱济世助人的心，去帮助更多受到同样法罪迫害的受害者。尤其是我想到我的师母。他当他自己的爱和无私的奉献给全世界，他的温柔跟建议永远带给我们底子满满的鼓励。所以，我告诉我自己，我愿意效法师父师母的精神，利用自己的假日时间，我去参与法税改革的活动跟接宣。我希望透过我们自身的案例，可以唤起更多的国人来重视法税改革的这个急迫性。谢谢大家。Marco Respinti is not, not with us, but we have a video with uh, his uh, concluding uh, remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, the Taijiman case is a serious case. So far, scholars, activists, journalists, and testimonials have been involved in a long series of webinars whose aim is to inform the general public on the situation, unfortunately, too little known and to contribute to redress too many misdeeds addressing directly to the Taiwanese government. Today's webinar is the latest in this important series, but it is quite relevant. It's titled Simply and Direct, Summing the Whole Case Up, demonstrates it well, seeking the truth about the Tajiman case. Basically, there is nothing more to say than what this title openly says we are, we all are, seeking the truth about the Taijiman case. Taijiman movement itself is seeking the truth about the case that ruined so many lives of its members. I am then deeply thankful to Human Rights Without Frontiers, presided by Willy Fabre, and to the Centers for Studies and New Religions, directed by Professor Massimo Antovignan, for organizing this important series of webinars and for calling me today to draw some conclusions at the end of another relevant event so brilliantly animated by our distinguished panelists and always welcome testimonials. Let me tell you that I am particularly honored to be personally involved in these webinars as the director in charge of Bitter Winter. Bitter Winter magazine denounces violation of religious liberty worldwide and has taken the Taijima case to heart. Its winter exists to promote freedom and justice for persecuted religious groups, but there is a special reason why Bitter Winter is so active on the Taijima case. We said it repeatedly during past webinars, yet it is so important that I want to repeat it again today. The Taijiman case is a case that shakes all souls. The Taijiman case doesn't regard just a spiritual group in Taiwan. This case begins, of course, in Taiwan. It begins with the Taijiman movement, but it grew and steadily grows to regard and concern everyone. The Taijiman case, <laughs> is, in fact, is a 
a case of justice denied, as well as a case of justice delayed, which are almost the same thing. B, a case of staggering religious freedom violation. C, a case of, a case of blatant human rights abuse. Let me briefly consider these three points. The first point, justice, is quite simple. The accusation against Taiji men have been proven false by many courts of law. There is nothing bad with Taiji men. There is no tax evasion. There is no fraud. There is nothing. Officially in the Taiwanese Justice Department knows it. Officially in the Taiwanese Fiscal Department knows it. Officially in the Taiwanese government knows it. Nonetheless, the consequences of these false accusations do persist and the Taijiman movement, its Shifu and Dizi suffer a sentence without having committed the crime. For all those Taiwanese officials that keep on persecuting Taijiman, well, Taijiman is simply guilty, guilty of innocence. After the acquittals by tribunals, Taijiman has not been let alone to live in peace. The persecution continues, and Taiji Men has been persecuted with no rest for 25 years, a quarter of a century. It is a case of justice denied in itself, plus a case of that specific form of justice denied that is justice delayed. In one word, no democracy, no civilization can be of a gross and grave injustice such as this. My second point is the religious freedom violation in the case of Taiji men, as well as my third is human rights abuse against Taiji men, Shifu and this. Religious liberty is the freedom of, of the human being to seek truth. And this directly connects us to our topic today in the United Nations International Day for the Right to the Truth concerning gross human rights violations and for the dignity of the victims. The topic being, as you all perfectly know, seeking the truth about the Taiji Man case. So saying seeking the truth about the Taiji Man case means speaking the same language of religious liberty as the freedom of human being to seek truth. In this way, while we seek truth for Taiji men, we exercise our religious liberty. Indeed, seeking the truth about the Taiji men case is religious liberty in itself. If in fact we establish truth on the Taiji men case and respect it, we do honor religious liberty at its. And since I defined religious freedom as the first human liberty, as well as the right to religious liberty as the first political human right, seeking the truth about the Taiji men case means defending human rights for every human being, for humanity and for a humane society. No matter why, we keep on repeating that no one on earth is excluded from the Taiji men case ever. Thank you. And say goodbye and thank you to all the participants. Thank you for a beautiful webinar and Willie will guide you to the final videos. And uh, yes, as it was announced, so we have a, a final uh, video. Shifu and Dizi have visited 101 countries spreading love and peace.